The state capitalism may work temporarily, but it doesn't, it will not work permanently. And there will be economic crises. Look, the Chinese people and Chinese culture is a culture that thrives on free enterprise. The Chinese people, wherever they live, are some of the most successful entrepreneurs, business people anywhere, whether they live in Malaysia or in Singapore or the, the Philippines or the United States or wherever Chinese people live. Look at Taiwan. Taiwan is one of the most vibrant economies in, in the world. Free enterprise cannot function under a communist system. Right now, you have kind of you have state capitalism in, in, in China. And China has managed, because it has not had to make the investments in the technology, because they've stolen the technology, they've been able to apply it um, as a result of state investments uh, in, in, in state corporations or investments in quasi-private corporations that are controlled by members of the Chinese political and military elite. And they have managed by harnessing these technologies to bring millions of people to work and to get good jobs and to get better incomes, and there's been a huge increase in the standard of living in China. Well, this is a great thing in one respect for the people's welfare, but uh, state capitalism may work temporarily, but it doesn't, it will not work permanently because capital is invested according to political criteria, not simply, not just economic criteria. And there will be uh, misallocations of capital, m bad loans, lots and lots and lots and lots of bad loans. And at some point, bubbles will burst and there will be economic crises in, 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 in a system like this. Fundamentally, free enterprise and the genuine creation of wealth, the organic creation of wealth that is done without the theft of other people's intellectual work, which is what the Chinese system depends on. It depends, it has depended completely upon theft for its, for, for, for its prosperity. For it to work, it's going to have to have a genuine rule of law uh, and, 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 and genuine freedom and people's human rights have to be respected. I would say to the Chinese people that um, you have inalienable human rights, individual rights. These are rights that are given to you either through nature or by God by virtue of your very existence as a human being. You have an intrinsic dignity as a human being. It is what makes you more valuable than an animal. It, it makes you more valuable than a plant. There is something perhaps even transcendent, a dignity that is given to you because you have a consciousness and a soul. You have a sense of what is right and wrong that is really the natural law that is written on the human heart. And your dignity is being suppressed by a totalitarian system that violates those individual rights and that keeps you fundamentally subjugated as a human being and, uh, and forces you to say things that you know are not true, uh, that, that forces you to violate your own conscience. And this is something that is ultimately intolerable for the proper flourishing of human life and the proper realization of man's highest possibilities. The realization of your God-given talents. The situation, however, is not hopeless. 
because there are many more ordinary Chinese people than there are members of the Communist Party and its instruments of repression. There are millions and millions and hundreds of millions more of you than there are of your oppressors. And we have seen the change take place in Afghanistan, in, 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 in the Soviet Union, in Poland and Hungary and in in, in Czechoslovakia and Romania. We've seen the change take place. And so it is, res resistance is not futile.